I would like to welcome everyone to the 41st episode of Money Trees. I hope everyone's week is off to a marvelous start. I know myself, I can't help but marvel at our guest today. She wears many hats in a spectacular fashion. Musician, curator, coffee connoisseur, and one of the brightest stars for sure in Web3. Jazzy is in the virtual garden. How are you feeling today? Jeez. Well, thank you so much for the awesome intro and for all of the songs. They sounded so good. Your sound system is like the best I've heard in Web3. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling good today. I have iced coffee in hand and I'm ready to go. Thank you. Thank you. As an engineer, I like to have quality audio as we lead in and start the show. Um, oh, I say that and then I hear that little feedback. My bad. <laughs> you talked about having some iced coffee. I recently just got into coffee. What is your favorite type? So you have to try an iced vanilla latte with blonde espresso and oat milk. I mean, if you're a dairy drinker, you can do regular milk, but it's something about like the creaminess of the oat milk. But then on the other side of that, you also have to just try like a regular iced coffee with breve, which is like half and half and classic syrup. I mean, I could go on and on, but those are like my two faves. No, I love that. See, I, I messed up because I, I went to the cafe and I've been going to cafes as a like work or whatever for the, the, I guess the vibes you can say, but I never, ever ordered anything. And so I finally go to order. I have no idea what to get. And I'm looking at the menu and I'm like, oh, okay. An Americano. That has to be like the most basic, like sugary oh, version of God. it. And it was horrible. And they were like, yo, this is hot water and espresso. Cause I went to ask them after the fact. So um, I, I just tried a latte, I think like two days ago. I wasn't mad at it. And so now I have my, uh, my next concoction that will go in. I, I, I like it. You know, I, I see why people rock with it at the start of all their days. Cause I didn't take my normal naps and I'm here for it. So. I didn't realize you did an episode of Future Surf Radio until after I had already invited you on. Shout out to Cam, fellow Money Trees alum. And I went and listened to that episode and I was just like, well, damn, okay, y'all have covered a huge portion. Um, and so I love that. Like, that, it was ill getting to hear that. It was also interesting for me just thinking about it where I don't think I've actually listened to any previous interviews from anyone that I've had on the show. So I don't want to rehash too much that you've already spoken about. Anyone who needs further context to this episode, feel free to check out Jazzy kicking off Future Surf with Cam Murdoch. Um, yeah, it was, it was fire. Y'all touched on so, so, so much. But I was immediately blown away by the fact that your first gig was on The Ellen Show. And so if you could just talk about that here in this space and how that came about, I would love to just hear that story again, honestly. For sure. Well, first, just let me know if you can hear me good, because I'm scared that I'm getting rugged again. I can hear you. Perfect. Okay. So, yeah, um, Ellen was like my first big gig ever in my life. Um, and I got it because a friend of mine who was in the industry, her name is Treasure Davis, um, who was an amazing singer, songwriter, just like all around dope person. Um, she just ended up like calling me. I'm like her little sister in the, in the, in the industry, or I was like her little sister. We we're just like sisters now, I guess, because, <laughs> because we're like the same age almost. But yeah, she just called me and she's like, what are you doing tomorrow? And I'm like, um, hanging, just got to go to class, you know, regular thing. And she was like, oh, okay. She was like, well, do you want to do a gig with me? And I'm like, oh yeah, for sure. Like what type of gig? And she was like, oh, it's Ellen. And I'm like, well, what do you mean it's Ellen? And she's like, is the Ellen show? Like, have you ever heard of that? And I'm like, um, treasure. Yes. I've heard of that. But what the hell do you mean? Like, you want me to go on Ellen? And she's like, yeah. She's like, I trust you. I know you can do it. But she's like, I just need you to understand that we have 24 hours. And I'm like, okay. And so she's like, if you're ready now, I can come pick you up. And I'm like, <laughs> everything just happened so fast. Um, and so, yeah, I lived in Santa Monica at the time. She literally came in like a few hours and whisked me off to rehearsal. Um, by the time we got there, like she played the song over and over again. And it was Pretty Girl Rock for Carrie Hilson. Um, and so, yeah, she was just playing the song over and over and over again, looping it on the way down to the rehearsal studio. 
Um, we got there and just like stayed in the bathroom the entire time waiting for Carrie to get there. And I was just like freaking out the entire time because I'm like, I literally have what, four hours to learn this entire song, like the background vocals of it though. And I think a lot of times people don't give background vocalists credit when it comes to these things because you're pulling apart a song in a way that no one even can or usually doesn't process it. I guess they just don't process it in that way. So me singing alto, I'm trying to pull those middle notes. And if anyone knows alto, you know that that's usually the fun part, but not when you're trying to hear it to learn it. It's usually the most difficult part to learn because it's not the melody and it's just stuck in between. So anyway, we're in the bathroom. I'm like literally recording myself dancing, trying to sing the song right. And I'm like, honestly, at this point, like God be with me because I'm like, it's going to go really good or really bad. And so... I just remember walking in and Carrie wasn't there yet. Um, and they're like, OK, you guys, we're going to do sound check. So we need you to check your mics, a.k.a. They were just trying to see if I could sing because this was just like a total referral. This wasn't something where they knew who I was or what I did. And so I was just so scared. And I just remember singing like a little bit of the verse and they were like, oh, OK, like <laughs> I guess that was the first test that I passed. And then, yeah, like a few hours later, Carrie ended up pulling up. Um, and yeah, it all went good. The rehearsal went good. And the next day, um, we went to the studios where Ellen was being shot. We got to meet her. It was my first experience with like in-ears. And I just remember, again, being so scared about the whole thing. But as soon as the music came on, it was fine. We did our thing. We actually recorded it twice. So it wasn't really live. Um, it was pre-recorded, and so we got to run through it twice because Carrie didn't like her first version. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. It was a dope experience, and yeah, I wouldn't change any of it. It just kind of tells you or proves the fact that, you know, as long as you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. And at that point, I have been doing my thing already a little bit, you know, open mics, performing in front of people. And I don't know if it could prepare me for like the idea of television shows and performing on such a big stage, but I didn't start from scratch either. So that was cool. Yo, I, I love that story and I love hearing it again. That's such an insane kind of turn of events. And that's really how the music industry tends to go. Um, I wanted to talk on just the Ellen concept and a little bit on daytime television. And you talked about it, how it's like it wasn't even actually recorded live and, you know, two takes went into it. And I think there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes before people see the final product for a lot of these shows and how all of this comes about. I also want to shout you out because backing vocals make the damn record. Uh, <laughs> if you listen to a lot of songs, people don't even realize how many layers of vocals or potential um, instrumentalists or other singers are on there that are making your favorite records work. So they are a crucial part to the record. Um, but it was crazy. When I first saw your Twitter handle, right? And I saw Mojazzy and I'm looking at it and I was like, yo, it, it threw me for a loop because I work with an artist, Shoma Josie. And <laughs> thinking about you and Ellen, I thought about when we did Kelly Clarkson with her and John Cena. And that was such a wild experience seeing how all of that worked behind the stage. A lot of that was actually impetus for where I see Money Trees going and why I call it a talk show and not a podcast. Because I think it's really, really ill getting to put these musicians in these like, I don't want to say game show, but in these different performance uh, elements. One thing that I love that you talked about is how big performing or how big performing is in your life. I'll say that. And I think that that is the number one piece for me as a fan or the number one way for me to connect with an artist. So on top of Ellen and that being your first big gig, can you talk about what your favorite performance anywhere has been? Yeah. So I think I'm trying to think what was my one of my favorite performances had to be like this random gig that I came upon. I feel like all of like my gigs that I happen to love or are really huge are things that I stumbled into, first of all. It's not ever really planned. It's just I happen to be walking and see something and I'm like, why not? Um, and this was one of those. The universe taking so, care of you. 
And yeah, I know, not always, to interrupt, but right? I know with you are and manifestation, we'll definitely jump to that too. But yes, you are, like you, you are an yeah, embodiment of no, that. Seriously, just like you said, it's so crazy. And I just remember like seeing a flyer and they, it said something to the, whatever, like it was like artist showcase, show up at this time to audition, blah, blah, blah. And because I knew that particular area in Hollywood and I knew the place, I'm like, oh, bet. Like, I just want to perform here because of the venue and, you know, how it looked and how um, how many people are usually in there during the weekends. And you have to remember, I was under 21 when I went. So this also was like halfway me just being like a badass and just wanting to get into clubs under 21 because I'm like, oh, I'm a performer, though. (laughs) And so. I went to a a rehearsal or not a rehearsal, but like an audition. And I remember singing Mary J. Blige, I'm Going Down, which has me in a chokehold to this day. Um, And it's like my favorite song to sing because it's something that I just know, like, I just know it so well, like it's embedded in my bones. And I know no matter what or where I am or who I'm in front of, I always sing it well. So I ended up singing that song and they were like, oh, my God, like we have to have you. And I'm like, sure. (laughs) And so I ended up doing that. And this was right after Ellen, actually. It was like a few weeks after, I think, um, or maybe a few months. Um, And, yeah, I went to like a lounge in Hollywood. And I just remember it being like the first showcase of mine where I put everything together myself I pulled together a live band. I put together like the music, which was, um, I remember it was Pretty Girl Rock, of course, because I just did it and it was like a big thing at that point. But instead of my name is Kerry, I was like, my name is Jazzy. (laughs) So I did that. I did um, a song from P. Diddy and his like group that he had with Don Richards. And then what else did I do? I don't remember what else I did, but that was one of my favorite ones because that's when I pulled my partner. Okay. He's in the audience. I just remember like singing the songs and like looking into his eyes, like, Oh yeah, I'm cute. I sound good. Come on. And so, yeah, that was like my favorite gig ever because I really think that I killed it. But then also I pulled a whole zaddy. Hey, <laughs> Talk about a relationship origin story. Where does the name Jazzy come from? Is that your real name? It is. Who is my mother and what was she thinking? I don't know. But it actually worked <laughs> I think it's out. it's amazing. Me. Yeah, it's perfect. I would say it actually worked out for me. Um, I've changed the spelling, though. Um, it's actually J-A-Z-Z-I, but I changed it because I wanted to be able to be on the top of anyone's Google search. So I changed it to J-A-Z-I-I just for, like, you know advertising and just trying to be hey look at the <laughs> seo expert hold on i see Period. that i see Period. that yo it's this is completely random but because he's in the uh the group chat uh life of tom used to go by thomas and i would tell him like i it's a it's a tough name <laughs> to make people be able to find you um and so the seo is a real real part of artistry especially in the digital world speaking on being an artist, performing, and man, yo, Cam, that was y'all talked for an hour and forty five minutes. You covered so much. Shout out to it was such a good conversation, y'all. I'm telling y'all, you shout out to my bestie. Serve. Yeah, y'all was... know Cam is literally my bestie. Our best friend relationship actually was initiated via Web three. It's the coolest thing. Please, y'all, like it's a <laughs> this is a complimentary episode to what was built there. Um, but you talked about I forget it feels like spoiler alerts because I don't because I already know. Um, but essentially leaving the space for a while and becoming slightly jaded from deals not working out and just the overall vibe of the music industry. And we're looking at this new potential space with Web3 and how music fits into it. In your own words, what do you think Web3 allows artists to do that wasn't available to you prior? 
Yeah, I mean, for me, it cultivates independence and the power to choose. And those two things are the most powerful things that I believe everyone needs to be um, head of in their life. And this is really just in every aspect, not just music or artistry, but just being able to say, I want to do this. Let me do this. And I don't want to do this, so I won't do this. You know, um, it really is just as simple as that for me. Um, but yeah, just like the independence and being able to wake up in the morning and say, I want to release this. So let's release this. Or, you know, just from the clothes that I wear to the music that I sing, the lyrics that I write, like, it's just really important at this point for me to do everything the way I see it done because it hasn't always been that way. And I just remember, you know, doing it everyone else's way and not working out. So I'm like, yeah, we're not doing that ever again. <laughs> Yo, know, for for sure. You know, there's a lot of conversations around certain platforms and how they work and whether or not they're actually benefiting artists. I know there was a conversation over the last, I think, 24, maybe 48 hours about potential shilling and the problems of a lot of uh, uh, spreading a lot of false information, I can say, and a lot of... Um, I don't like throwing people under the bus. It seems It seems unnecessary, but just it's, it's some bullshit. And trying to wade through that becomes difficult in this new space. So for you as an artist, in what ways are you looking to see platforms and even um, influencers improve? You know what? That's a great question. I feel like scammers are going to be everywhere. Trash people are going to be everywhere. And it's up to us to be able to sift through it and pay them no mind. Because I feel like when we give them our time, when we give them our energy, all we're really doing is amplifying their voices. And I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like there are plenty of platforms on Web3 that have great ideas and that are executing it. Um, beautifully. And I feel like it's just really up to us as artists to be firm in our yeses and our noes, because if enough of us do it, they will follow suit, you know, and I feel like there's real power um, in banding together and just, you know, taking a stance. So although there is bullshit for sure, I really, I really am at the point where I'm just like, it's not that I'm blind to it, but I just try not to put so much energy into it because I'm like, yo, like, I've been doing this for way too long to be arguing over the internet with a PFP. At this point, we're not. We're not. I think I just clicked mute. <laughs> That's all good. It's all, yo, I, I think the mic button, uh, especially when you're hosting too, because if you have requests, the mic on and off button looks real sketchy. You're like, ah, I don't want to let this person up at the moment. I'm trying to make sure. Not that anyone here requested that isn't going up. I just mean in general. Anyway, um, Yo, so you have a pretty illustrious record in TV and sync. And I've been trying to figure out what that can look like in Web3. I was talk, uh, talk, talking, <laughs> talking to Bob on a Money Trees episode and saying that the Loser Club needs to essentially license out her song to be like their official theme song and then have that on a lot of their promo and all of that. Have you thought about what TV and sync can look like in the web three space? Cause I haven't seen too much of it yet. I mean, I have not deeply thought about it because I feel like there's so many things that are like being pushed in this space. I don't even know if we're ready to talk about TV sync and film and not even that it's not possible or whatever, but I feel like if we were to talk about it in this way, where say, for instance, I was to do a web three drop with a song and then I dropped it on web two and then it ended up on TV sync and film. That's one conversation. But then to have like our own, you know, subsector of that here where say, for instance, like an ad comes on, um, like a mirror ad comes on or something like that. And then my music is playing in the background. I don't even know. Like, I don't know how that could be, I guess. Um, but yeah, just speaking to like that first option, that's definitely possible. And I feel like for me, and I don't know if it's just because I've, you know, been heavily in web two prior to coming to web three, like Web 2 was where I predominantly did most of my work. I feel like no Web 3 artist should ever shut off the, the Web 2 world. And what I mean by that is no matter how successful you are in Web 3, there's so many opportunities still in Web 2. And 
why would you cut that off just because of A, B, and C, you know? And if there's anyone that can preach on that, I feel like it's me because, again, I've been quite devalued. I've had so many different no's, but I also know what it feels like to experience the yes. And so, you know, my advice to everyone in Web3 is not to cut off Web2 because there's still so much potential and possibilities in there. I feel like, if anything, come over to Web3 get your your confidence, boost that, like work on projects that you may have been nervous about in Web 2 or blah, 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 and then head back over to Web 3 and show them what you got. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm never a person to say no. And I'm always a person to be like, let's let's see how we can freak this into a way that benefits me. You know what I'm saying? Yo, absolute bars there. I think <laughs> that's a. Um, I, I've been saying I'm going to get sound effects for 41 episodes now. I think I actually have to make it happen because I would have let off a bunch of the bombs. You're saying str- like straight facts, and it becomes a thing of for artists. Sometimes it's easy to become so frustrated with the previous system that you want to throw it all away. And at the end of the day, if we just look at this from a number standpoint, there is not a large enough audience in Web3 yet for musicians. Even if it does come in a month, six months, a year, whatever that timeline is, right now there isn't. And so to kind of bank your entire career on something that may happen at an undisclosed time becomes pretty risky. And there's still a lot of value to these traditional methods. You know, there are issues with social media, but there's still hundreds of millions of people on there. And I always say it's like the rule of 10, where if you play something or show something to someone, three people will like it, three people uh, won't like it, and four people won't care. And so just from a numbers game, you want to have as many people get exposed, especially in music, too. I think art can be a little different because artists have made entire careers where they have three to ten patrons that support all of their art. And then it gets shown to museums and so on and so forth. Music is different. We need to go on tour. We need to put merch out. We need to have... Uh, you know, streams more or less with looking at it traditionally. But even with NFT sales, there needs to be an audience. And people talk about, well, do we have to have utility or not? And for artists that have large audiences, you don't really have to have utility because you have hype. And hype becomes your utility. And there's just, there's a, there's still pros to figuring out how to make it work. So I love everything that you just said. Yeah. I mean, and again, the thing about Web 2 is this, like you just kind of never know. You can wake up one morning and be like a quote unquote overnight success. And why would I throw that all away? You know, I feel like two things can be true at once. And I feel like, you know, although, yes, right now I'm putting so much more energy into Web 3, it doesn't mean I'm just going to leave Web 2 behind because the reality is I wake up every single day in Web 2. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I still have to live my life. I still have to, you know, sing in real life. I still, you know. And so for me, you know, when I talk to people about it, I always just try to remind people that two things can be true at once. You know, Web 3 is absolutely popping. Yes. But that doesn't mean that I'm just going to be like, no, to opportunities in Web 2. I remember the first maybe three or four viral songs that went crazy on TikTok. And I was like, oh, man, screw this platform. Like, it's ruining music. And then I was like, ah, but then again, this is a great way for kids to discover it. Why am I? I sound like old man, like the uh, get off my lawn old man. It's like I can't have this mindset of just because it's not how my generation came up listening to something that that invalidates it. And one of my favorite artists I discovered on TikTok, which is freaking Nardo Wick, who had the song that I didn't even realize was him, so I was listening to his music. Uh, But sticking with the Web3 conversation, we played it right before we started the episode. You have a very, very fire record you put out called You Are. You worked with Is and... I love the art that came along with that. Can you talk about how the song and collab came about? Yeah, for sure. Um, It's funny because I recorded that song like 10 years ago or so, or more than 10 years ago, actually. Yeah, more than 10 years ago. Um, And when when I recorded that song, that was just another example of 
like the power and beauty of believing in yourself and believing in your sound. Um, it was like one of the first times that I wrote this song. I vocally arranged it all myself, which I did previously, but I was also usually waiting for feedback from people. And with You Are, I was like, mm, I love it. So I'm not even going to trip on whatever anyone says type of thing. Um and so, yeah, it's just been a gem. You know, people have been using it for like their wedding songs or, you know, for just like their playlists. And so I'm like, why not bring this to Web3? And it's funny because I always or not always, but I've heard the argument come out a few times, like, don't just dump your old stuff in Web3. And I'm like, ah, don't. This does not apply to everyone because uh, 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 just because it's old, right? Just because it's old doesn't mean that it's not quality. And I mean, not to be that person, but I know fire when I hear it. And so for me, old to me, new to you really does apply here where I was like, I definitely can put this out and be proud of this music in 2022, you know? And I believe that, you know, as artists too, why not? use the things that you believe in and that you love, no matter when you did it. Like, if you love it and believe in it, why not do it? Um, but yeah, the the art with Iz was super dope, too, because I met Iz in a space, actually. And when I met Iz in the spaces, it was crazy because she was like, Hi, oh, here's my daughter. She was like, um, she was just like talking in spaces. And then she was like, hi, mama, what? Sorry, y'all. Okay. No, sorry. you're good. You're good. Back in. Um, and so yeah, she was like, um, talking on spaces, right? On stage. And I happened to be on stage too. And so she DM'd me and she's like, Well, what's your number? And I'm like, here's my number right here. And I gave her our well, we exchanged numbers like five minutes into like talking and DMs. And then when we were talking in text message, I'm like, I literally love you. And she was like, no, I love you. <laughs> and she was like, whatever you need, I got it. Like, let me know if you want to collab. And I'm like, girl, please. I'm like, you don't understand that it's the other way around. Like, I stand for you and I want you to know whenever you want to collab, like, let me know. And so, yeah, like five days before... um, I was going to release you are, I was just thinking like, oh my God, my cover art. Like I really want something dope because I wanted to release like a VIP version and then a regular version, but I wanted the VIP version to be something like more exclusive. And so I hit is up and she's like, girl, why are you hitting me up like five days before? I'm like, sorry. And she's like, no, I got you. I got you. And so, yeah, that's really how this collab was born. And <sighs> You guys, like, it's just extremely special to me because NFTLA just happened last week. And the amount of rooms that I was able to be in because of Is This Art and because of that collab is crazy. And so it's kind of just like another testament to being open to doing new things and to not being afraid and, you know, just not being like nervous about doing something that you really feel good about and that your intuition is really like pushing you towards doing because like the, it's just crazy how it's been received. And again, just like the places I've been able to go because of it is just, it's insane. I don't even know. Yo, that is a testament to the space no pun intended, speaking on literal spaces and the way that relationships can expand from them. And you know, that 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 was ill. I, I love I love the record, love the art. I think the fact that you said it old to me but new to you, there are so many joints that I just haven't heard. And me like anytime I hear them, they will be new. I think people can get caught up on that because even that it's not like it's necessarily uh dated it doesn't sound that and some things can sound classic there's a whole genre dedicated dedicated to sounding retro or sounding old school and being able to capture that moment and display it in this new time it resonated and it clearly resonated with people as you saw from the reaction and the love that you got when you shared that so i'm really really glad that um that record or that nft came about and that record was able to see the light of day in this space and also shout out to that being wedding songs i mean that is one of the illest music cosigns possible you know the how, uh, what do we call it the the peak of love being uh, associated with your record so i i love that jazzy if i give yeah. you a crystal ball oh sorry no what's up 
I just wanted to say, what's up, Is? That's my girl. She's in the audience. Oh, what up? Yeah, just just talking about you. Um, Jazz, if I gave you a crystal ball and said, what's one year in the future look like for you and your artist career? Money is all about planting seeds, planting ideas. And ideally, we look back on this a year or five years from now and see where your mind was at and how you've progressed in that time. From what I've seen, I can barely imagine what that one year will look like with the effort and work that you're putting into this space. But for you right now on this day, what do you think a year from now looks like? You know, it's so crazy because this space has taught me to dream bigger. Um, And so for me, what I see a year from now I see so many more TV sync and film placements with my music. I see an album that is literally top three R&B charts for all of DSPs. I see Web3 collabs like crazy that are meaningful and that give back to the community in the way that I see fit, which I'm very, very bullish on a few different causes, which I'll talk about later. Um, Yeah, I definitely see myself, you know, really being able to beautifully bridge both Web 2 and Web 3 with my works. And I do see myself, you know, on large stages in front of hundreds of thousands of people. I see myself on tour with major artists, but also as Jazzy, the artist. Um, I just it's so crazy. Like, it's even hard for me to say these things out loud, not because I don't believe them, but because I believe in so much of myself, you know? Um, but yeah, the next year is about to be crazy. And you know what? I, I'll even take the, the year time frame off of that. Cause I don't want it to ever feel limited. We can just say the future. Uh, cause those are amazing goals, all achievable goals. And sometimes when timelines don't work out, that can be discouraging. And so let me remove the year on that. I think that those are like, again, those are amazing goals to be working towards and you'll have them. You'll put in the work ethic and, just we talked about it with the manifestation as some of your greatest moments and your greatest memories have come about from things that you didn't even expect to happen. And so I imagine that the next year and beyond will be riddled with those as well. I have one last question before I do like my closing questions. And I love the fact that the, the community with lit NFTs, I've been talking about that the last few episodes as many from the, the group have come on the show. It is genuinely my favorite artist community because of the communication, the talent that's in there. And it's, it's fun. It's a mix of really good work and just like shooting the shit and saying what's up and checking in on each other. So if a genie were to grant you three wishes, but they had to be for other people, what would your three wishes be? My first wish, and does it have to be like one particular person, or does it have to be like one group? I gotta get. No, it could be. It could be anything. It could be <laughs> just just others. It cannot be related to you. Okay, sure. So, the first wish that I would want granted is for a foundation to be birthed in my niece Taylor's name that will be spoken about and beautifully affect the lives of so many different teens that have diabetes. Um, And then my second one would be to see all of my friends who are in music and who have been working their asses off just to get the recognition they deserve and the spotlight they deserve and whatever that looks like to them, because gauging success for every single person is different. It looks different, but I want people that I love to be satisfied with what they're getting, the reciprocity from the universe and the abundance. Um, And then third... Hmm. Hmm. My third, my third, my third. My third is to get one million more wishes. Can I do that? <laughs> oh, that is the one rule for wishes. I know, you I know. Wish I for know. more wishes. All right. Um, so my third is honestly to see my kids never have to struggle in the way that I've had to and for them to get the lives they deserve. Yo, that is... All three were beautiful. I will especially speak on the last one. And I feel that there's a lot of doom and gloom for you know good reason with a lot that's going on in the world. But I would argue that the recent generations and really the advent of the internet and the level of connectivity that has started to exist in the world is going to change the way 
the future looks with a lot of kids having opportunities that weren't previously provided. And that to me is really, really exciting. So that third wish in particular, but I love all three. Jazzy, you know, oh, there was a couple of things I actually didn't touch on that if you still got a second, I'd like to chop on before I let I you go. I do, I do. Fire. So Feather and Wakonomy, am I saying that correct? Yes. How, okay, tell me about, because I, I love, I'm, I'm guessing it's Wakanda Economy, right? That's a mashup right there, or am I off base? No, you're right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> tell me about Wakonomy and Feather. <laughs> Yeah, so actually, Wakonomy is a marketplace that was birthed by my partner. Um, he's been working on it for quite some time, and it's a marketplace for artists to come and kind of just like live out their wildest dreams. Um, I always tell artists it's one place that you want to be, and they're actually working on their um, Layer 2 version right now. It's going to be coming out, I believe, in a few months, and it's actually sickening to see something be birthed from scratch, from like someone's mind, and just like the work and the time and the love. And the capital. Let's not forget the capital that has to be put behind it. Um, and so, yeah, they needed to kind of test out their version one. Um, and I was like, um, just kind of like on the sidelines. I try not to get too intermixed. I try to, you know, keep a healthy balance between partner and then like business and making sure, you know, like the the feedback I'm giving is warranted slashed wanted. Um, and so, yeah, they ended up not being able to work with the person that they intended to drop with to test it out. Um, it was like an open sea debacle going on. I don't know if you guys remember when open sea was like having all of the, sh the problems and blah, blah, blah. And so they were like, well, we need someone else that, you know, doesn't have so many moving parts. And so he was like, do you want to drop? And this was like three days before. <laughs> and I'm like, sure, question mark. And so, yeah, we kind of just went into like a 36 hour cave and just got it done. Um, and Feather was another oldie but goodie, but I went in and I re-recorded some of the Vox just to kind of update it and give it like a new feel, a fresh feel. And yeah, it worked out. Um, I did a vocal token, um, which sold for 700 Matic. And that basically granted the collector the ability to uh, redeem it at any time. So you guys know Jazzy now, but like you were saying, Jazzy in six months, Jazzy in a year is going to be even better and greater and bigger. And so they can basically redeem it at any time for a verse um, and a hook. And then I also had um, additions available, which two, I believe, are still left of like Feather, the newer version that's not available on DSPs. So it was actually a really dope experience just to kind of work with like a graphic designer on that token and work with that full team. Like they're amazing people just as a total. So, yeah, it was cool. Yo, I love the name. I talk about how names to me really can get me hooked. And when I saw it, I was like, I was like struggling to pronounce it at first. I'm like, what con? Then it hit. I'm like, oh, I love that. If you're an art, and well, I love that you, the verse idea I think is amazing. I um, wrote this article around a concept I called cultural investing when I first saw NFTs way back in February. Well, not way back, but <laughs> a year ago. It feels like it's way back. And the idea that there would be so many different ways for artists to be supported and funded by people that believe in their long-term efforts. And if I'm someone that's very interested in where Jazzy is going 18 months from now, and I'm also a musician, it becomes a no-brainer investment. And I say, no, nah, I'm going to hold this. I don't need it for this album. But the next album, yeah, let me cash this in when the price is 7000 Matic. Yeah, I'm, I know I had a point. I had a point. No, don't lose it. I was thinking about how ill, it was, <laughs> how ill it's going to be. And I'm like, yo, cashing in the verse. And I'm like, damn. I need to talk about more about your verses and how I love your writing. But that wasn't where I was going to go with it. Shout out to you. <laughs> Shout out to your writing. Oh, yes. Yeah, staying Thank on economy. How do artists that may want to get involved reach out or, you know, figure out or be a part of the next drop or the, the V2 that you mentioned? Yeah, so I would definitely say give them a follow first. It's at Wakonomy, W-A-K-A-N-O-M-Y. And just send them a direct message. They're super cool, super laid back. It's nothing crazy. You don't have to fill out a form and then wish for them to respond in three months. Like, they're very on it. Um, and like I said, I just, I mean, I can't really give much alpha, but 
I can tell y'all this, like, I, I shit you not, like, the way that it looks and the way that it operates is insane. And although I know I'll be, like, one of the first to get on it, I really do, like, I'm really pushing for all of you guys to definitely kind of get on like that waiting list so that you can try it out and get your music out on it because, oh my God, like it's sick. And it's not, I'm trying to like to, I'm trying to like go around (laughs) without saying too much, but just know like it's layers to this. Like it's crazy. We will be excited to see the launch and yeah, y'all follow it and check it out. I think that getting in with new platforms and builders that are going about it in a way that artists can relate to and understand and also have direct lines of communication will be a major leg up as more and more people get involved in the space. So Chazzy, this has been an incredible episode. Again, I got to give one <laughs> more shout out to Cam and Future Surf because this is like an accompanying episode. I think there were some other questions I may have just skipped over because you already answered them. Y'all need to check that out. Before I let everyone go, I asked the guest two questions. My first question is going to be, what is your seed phrase? I keep telling people that seed phrase is not a good enough term for an account recovery key. Because if you're a newcomer in the space and you hear seed phrase, it doesn't sound like, hey, if I lose this, I lose access to all of my crypto, to all of my NFTs. So on Money Trees, we've repurposed seed phrase to be a saying, quote, slogan, lyric, motto that you live by, that embodies your approach to your art, to your career, to your craft. So Jazzy, what is your seed phrase? Hmm, my seed phrase would be, Never measure your success or never worry about how your success is measured by others from the outside looking in. And what I mean by that is it's really simple. Whatever you feel like you've done, it can't be limited and it can't be minimalized by anyone else if you're proud of it. If it's something that you believe in and if it's something that you truly are proud of, like lean into that. and Don't worry about what anyone else thinks because at the end of the day, Your artistry is yours, and no one knows what it took to get you there. Whew. Yeah, I've got some ideas, and to your point about it's it's tough, because you be in Twitter spaces wanting to just, like, let all the alpha go. And I think that this is a, like, I'm not worried about necessarily oversharing here, but it's still not a final idea, so I don't want to say it that it not happened. But these seed phrases, I mean, I, I love these conversations, but the seed phrases and hearing these amazing people sum up their approaches into these quotes are, I don't know, it, it, to me, it, to me, it feels like Web3 Tumblr. And I don't know if any of y'all were on Tumblr, maybe yeah, I just myself right there. But <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that was like that was so ill like that literally felt to me and not like in the cheesy way like it felt like when you see those tumblr quotes and it's got like hello fucking repost anyway um that was beautiful the second question is going to be we have the one of one money trees number 41 note that will be listed after this episode what is the price of your note going to be i have no idea i I didn't know I was going to be doing that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, friend. What? What? I have no idea. Can I not get back to you or do I have to say this live on a recorded air? No, you you, you, you can get back to me. I think I think I'm, Ooh, so, because of prep, yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't normally prep people ahead of time. Like even with the show, I just say, hey. I like your art or, you know, whatever my intro will be. Would you want to come chop and talk more on it? And some people have heard the seed phrase and the the pricing question, so they're prepared. Some haven't. I like to leave it up to the guest. You know, the the NFT is a way to celebrate and immortalize your appearance on the show and have that be on the blockchain and let that exist there permanently. I still think digital art to me is like the most um, together of all of the NFT formats. Uh, and until I figure out a best way to do long form, I'm just enjoying doing like the the images. I think the images are, you know, ill. Of course, it's my thing, so I love it. But, yeah, but <laughs> my bias super, aside. They're super dope because I'm like, I, I, yeah. I looked at mine and I'm like, this is so sick. And I didn't even realize you were going to do that when I sent that photo. I'm like, this is crazy. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Fernando. He, he's been killing it. 
But um, yeah, when it comes down to the seed phrase and then the pricing, it becomes a you know guest by guest type of thing. Uh, the main thing is I thought it was a really interesting kind of model where I give the guest 50% of whatever the NFT sells for, and then me and the artist split the other 50%. So you're able to kind of make money off of the appearance with the idea being that the same way your verse will be worth more later if people listen back to this episode and they get something from it or it's like jazzy a year from now is jazzy who a year from now will be and they'll be like yo all the nfts that she has sold are unavailable but we can go get this money trees one over here it becomes a just an interesting model and to me it's like a fun way to add another layer into what it is that i'm building here so you can get back to me on the price. You know, it can be people have given given them away for free. Some people have asked me to list it at eight hundred and nineteen ETH, and you know, I honor <laughs> I honor both ends of the spectrum. Because yeah, I was okay. about to be like thirty trillion dollars, but as a joke. But then I was like, wait, you may take me seriously. So yeah, someone was like, oh, can we do a, a million ETH? And I'm like, I mean. I guess, but if it ever sells, that means ETH probably went to zero, but <laughs> I'll, I'll list it. No worries. Um, <laughs> no, to, me, yeah, to me, it's exciting, too, because I'm like, damn, it's a it's a joke, but then I, it, maybe not. You know, they gave they gave Homeboy who – I'm not you – nope, know nope, nope. See, I'm not throwing shade. I think that's the one I thing I will you, avoid I doing. You, I <laughs> no, no. you are just like me. I have to really catch myself. Like, oh. Sorry, I'm like, damn. All right, I, all right. I'm a pivot. I'm not gonna even say it. Moving on. <laughs> I've stopped saying things are bad and that they're not for me. That's been my thing. I'm like, yo, you know what? It's it's just not for me. I because it is for somebody else out there. I think that go, going back to earlier that rule of ten where it's a waste of my energy to even think about why I don't like not 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 even think about it, but to give it like you said earlier with scammers by giving them lending them your voice by even talking about it, you're giving it life. And so for me, I like to leave all the things that I don't rock with somewhere else and not on air. So um, anyway, it's all to say 819 ETH, while potentially ridiculous, not unfathomable. So Jazzy, you can get back to me on whatever the price you want. 30 trillion, I do think that the economy would have collapsed for that one. So maybe not there. Um, (laughs) But yeah, yeah, thank you. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll save my slick comment for the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on. This has been a marvelous way to start my week. Marvelous Monday. Oh, you know, look, I like alliteration. Okay. I do tangents. I think I did great with not going on tangents this episode. So I appreciate that. I also feel like it was a bit of a cheat code because, again, I had an hour and 45 minutes to prep. Um, that was another fire interview. You are an amazing orator, you know, sharing your stories, an amazing musician. The vocal talent is there. I'm very excited to see what comes from you in the future. And yeah, you know, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate you so much. And I'm looking forward to just seeing where you go and where money trees goes, because you got something here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. This is it's it's to me it's so much fun just getting to talk with you guys for real, for real. Like I always learn so much and I feel like the space, there's always so much happening. It's really difficult to keep your finger on the pulse. And I get to talk to four amazing people, whether it's musicians, artists, founders, whatever, a week. And so it's it's ill. And hopefully somebody takes something from this. Someone may hear about TV and sync opportunities. I think what you said earlier, I'm definitely going to clip about artists and their approach to the space and not necessarily throwing away the traditional elements of the music industry because they still do provide value. I'll tell y'all, those sync in commercial and TV checks, it ain't Hello. Not, they not small. Yeah, like they are. they pay you for five years. I'm telling you from experience, my friends, get on the TV. <laughs> yeah, those are those are nice. So, yeah, Jazz, you drop some gems, and I guarantee somebody will hear this in the future and take away something that improves their career. And so, yeah, we're helping people, and this was fun. So, um. Again, yeah, thank you, thank you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your week, and I look forward to seeing more of your projects. 
Thank you again and have an amazing week. And thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys.